Hey, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. Let's get open for business and let's wake up the football gods here. Wake up, guys. As we sit 22 days, 11 hours, 48 minutes, and 20 seconds away from kickoff of the 2019 season. Can't believe it. Clock started at 226. We're down to 22. Woo! And today, friends, the Cowboys have their last padded practice in Oxnard. Tomorrow they have a walkthrough, and they hop on that big old jet airliner headed for Hawaii to take on the Rams in week two of the preseason. We'll see a little bit more of the team. You know, maybe we'll see the offense play the first quarter in defense, the starters at least. Um, hopefully, see just a little bit more, not too much. We don't want to show everybody everything we got there. Um, and then we get back home to the star. And hopefully when the team gets back to the star, that's when they'll really start hammering out these deals because these things can come together really, really quick. And Jerry Jones, he had not become a multi- a multi-billionaire. That just didn't sound right. Listen, he's got a whole big pot of money, okay? A lot of money. You know, the Dallas Cowboys being the most franchise, worth, most valuable franchise uh, in the world. That didn't happen by accident. Jerry Jones is a shrewd businessman. And he knows what the hell he's doing. So, he was uh, talking and you know Jerry Jones, he does not disappoint at all. Jerry Jones has some of the greatest quotes probably in the history of the NFL. And um, let, let's start out with a couple of these. Um, one of them, let's see, where, where did I go with the, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Jerry was asked to compare Hawaii to Cabo. You can get wet in both of them. Bye, guys. I'm fixing to really mess up. I can feel it coming on. Yeah. Maybe you should have left a little bit sooner. Because Jerry was then asked about the contract situations. We know that, you know, Dak Prescott, we've heard rumors of him looking for $40 million, which they say aren't true. And we're hearing that it was possibly leaked by the Cowboys um, to kind of sway public opinion on their side and paint Dak as, as well as every player as being greedy. Now, I understand the Cowboys' point of view that they're saying, listen, we've been in the situation before where we've been in cap hell and we've had to release players that we didn't want to and things, and we don't want to get into that situation again. We want to keep these things in line. We don't want to be trendsetters. I get that. But... If I'm the player that's out there destroying my body and playing and taking all the abuse that I do from our fan base and things, I want to try and get as much as possible. I also want to be like everybody else, you know? I don't want to look and be the kid at Christmas morning that, you know, has got a bucket of coal and the, my neighbor's kid's got all the toys. You know what I'm saying? But here's Jerry Jones's analogy. Wow. If you have a queasy stomach, turn away now. Turn away now. Picture if you were a driver of a car. And you had a wreck. And your hand was nearly severed off. And you didn't understand your anatomy. You looked down. You're splurting blood. So you open the door. And you run to the woods. And you either die bleeding to death or shock. The educated man, he looks down, knows his anatomy, squeezes and knows that his best chance is to wait for help. That's because he's been there a lot and done that. So I'm squeezing and waiting for help. Now, he was then asked later on, where's the help coming? And he said, I'm pulling it out a piece of my anatomy. He also said, 
I got to realize that I could let a DeMarcus Ware out of here because I didn't have enough money. Because I paid it to too many others. That happened to me, and I don't want it to happen again. And we've got some ta top talent here. Well, that is an interesting analogy. But I dare say, the best way to deal with that situation, because you definitely don't want to just get up and run into the woods. I, I don't know why anybody would get out of the car and run to the woods, because the woods, I, I just don't know why anybody would do that. But I dare say the best thing to do, actually, you know, he's right. You want to stop the bleeding. And if it's nearly severed off, you actually may want to take, you know, your shirt, a towel, a rag or something, and tie yourself a tourniquet to try and stop that bleeding. Because if your hand is nearly severed off, you put your other hand on top of it, isn't going to stop the bleeding. It'll slow it down, but it ain't going to stop it. But then if you got the tourniquet on here, you can take your other hand and you can try to dial 911 in case you're out in the woods where nobody sees you. Because I'm hearing that you're running out in the woods. So maybe you're out alone and nobody knows you have the accident. So at least you got the other hand free. And you can try and find a towel to put on there to take care of it. But I dare say the best thing to do about that situation is actually put down the cell phone, pay attention to the road, know the road and know what's coming down the road, so that way you can avoid the accident. Because if you're not cut open, you're not bleeding to death. You're not having to wait for help to come. And this is where the Dallas Cowboys are a lot like me. For me, I could never do anything early. You know, you get a homework assignment, you got three weeks to go ahead and do that report. The wise person would go through and start working on that report immediately. Start doing their research, you know, make an outline, get it together and stuff, you know, do a rough draft, proofread it, and then, you know, do a final copy, you know. Get it typed up. Yeah, that's right. We actually typed, okay? We didn't, we used typewriters. I know I'm old. I'm old. I get that, okay? But we had to type it up. And then we had to proofread it ourselves, okay? We didn't have Word. And then that way, you got time to make sure that it's right. Me, on the other hand, shh. I wait till like the day before to start doing that report. The last minute. And have to panic and just trying to throw a whole bunch of stuff down and just get it done and get it turned in the next day. And that's me. I can't do stuff ahead of time. I have to be under pressure to get things done. But see, the Cowboys have nobody to blame for the situation but themselves. Because they wait till the last minute to try and do these things. Prudence tell you, get these things done early. I, I said this back before Russell Wilson got his deal. Get Dak Prescott done before everybody else goes through and changes the market. Because when you do that, then you're ahead of the curve. Now you're behind the curve. Now you're looking at others that are coming through there. Now you are right here at the season where it's become a distraction. But you gotta deal with these things. It's now an emergency. You've got to get them done. You've got Zeke Elliott in Cabo. You've got Dak Prescott, who is on the last year of his deal. You've got Amari Cooper with a hurt heel, who is on the last year of his deal that you gave up a number one for. It's going to be what it's going to be. But just in case, Jerry, you are in that situation, or any of you others are in that situation, let's go through and understand exactly. Sterile gauze pads or cloth, bandages, adhesive tape, bandage clips or safety pins, soap, and water. Step one, if they are available, put on a pair of disposable gloves. Step two, help the victim lie down and elevate the body part that is bleeding. If it is possible to raise the part above the heart, this will help slow the bleeding. Step three, remove or clean anything that's in or near the wound that you can remove or clean easily, including clothing or jewelry. Step four, cover the wound with sterile gauze pads or cloth and press firmly against the wound. Keep the pressure steady and consistent. 
If a foreign object is causing the bleeding, such as a knife or a piece of wood, do not remove it. It may be keeping the bleeding under control. Try to keep the object in injured area still, placing the dressing around the object and pressing lightly against the wound. Step 5. Wrap a clean bandage around the wound and secure it with adhesive tape, bandage clips, or safety pins. If blood soaks through the bandage, apply another bandage over the first one. Step 6. Continue applying pressure, either with your hand on the dressing or with the bandage, for at least 15 minutes. Do not check to see if the bleeding has stopped before the time is up. Step 7. If the flow of blood has not slowed or stopped after 15 minutes of steady pressure, call 911. Step 8. If the bleeding does not stop, squeeze the artery that supplies blood to that limb or area against the bone. Maintain direct pressure on the wound and direct pressure on the pressure point until help arrives. To find the artery on an arm, press midway between the shoulder and the elbow on the inside of the arm. To find the artery on a leg, press against the crease where the inside of the thigh meets the groin. Step 9. Carefully remove your gloves, being sure not to come into contact with the blood. Step 10. Wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water once you're done tending to the bleeding. Did you know the arteries that supply your arms with blood are called the brachial arteries? Those in your leg are called the femoral arteries. In other words, Jerry, call 911. I'm Mark Holmes, and well, I got to go get to my day job, but thank you guys for being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. We might do a little live stream here later on tonight, and we may be dealing with some of these giant cockroaches that are coming out the woodwork that believe that now all of a sudden that they're a good team. I'm Mark Holmes, and I'll see you guys soon.